Welcome back guys. So now that we've gone ahead and found our way around Unity and installed our asset, we can go ahead and actually start making our map. This is the fun part. So first things first, we are here in our sample scene. Go to scenes and go to sample scene. And we are in the sample scene. I've already dragged and dropped in my skater. And here we're going to take a look at the hierarchy. This is where our objects are that are in the scene currently. And our project is all the assets that are in the project um, that we can add to the scene and are going to be utilized in the scene. So in the hierarchy, first things first, you always want to delete the main camera. We do not want a camera in our scene because that will be the camera that the game uses when we export the map, and we definitely don't want that. The next thing is we can actually kind of leave some of this stuff. We'll delete the example assets, but the volume settings is fine. This is actually our scene settings that um, it just comes to fall in the sample scene. The post-process volume is also totally fine, although I, we can delete it for now or disable it for now with this check mark. Um, but I'll actually delete that because to get volume, to get post-processing volumes working, we have to put them onto our scene settings or volume settings object. We can go over that later in a separate tutorial. And our directional light is also fine. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tone this down to about 3.5 because 10 is a insanely bright. Uh, you do not want to use it at 10. And I'm just going to reorganize by putting those on top of our reference skater object. This is the accurate size. This is the model directly from the game. So this is the accurate size of our skater and we should use this as a scale reference when creating our map. Now we can go ahead to our project and we can go to our map creation folder that we looked at earlier go into our prefabs and I'm just gonna start with a pad so we have eight options here we have four sizes of grass and four sizes of concrete and I'll just drag our concrete pad over I'm gonna set the position to zero so that it's nice and centered and everything that we build from here on out will be based around the zero point of the entire world this is fairly useful and it will make things a lot easier when you're trying to move stuff around using these values Something else we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to create empty, I'm going to rename this spawn point, just like that, same capitalization and everything. And I'm also going to set this to zero, 0, and I'm going to drag it just a little bit above the ground so that our skater doesn't spawn in the ground. Another thing we can go ahead and do is we can click on this button to select icon, can choose other, and I've actually added the pin into the asset folder. So now we have the actual pin icon where our spawn point is, and this will make it a little easier for us as we try to continue creating our map. We can have a very clear representation of where our spawn point is. We can always see that this pin is where our skater will spawn. If I don't want my skater to spawn here, I can move the pin. If I want my skater to spawn point in a different direction, I can simply rotate it along the Y axis and anywhere that the blue arrow points is the direction that the skater will spawn facing. So right now, this is how the skater will spawn in this position facing this direction. If I were to rotate this, he would spawn another direction. And I'm going to go ahead and move this up here. And I'm going to go ahead and create empty. I'm going to use this as a sort of folder to help keep things organized. I'm going to call this required. And I can drag this up to the top. And I'm going to put these three items in my required folder. That way I always know where to find them over here in my hierarchy and I won't lose track of them. I have a pretty good habit of pressing Control S anytime I make an adjustment. This little asterisk shows up like any other program and Control S saves the scene. That's pretty useful. Stuff likes to crash in Unity from time to time. It's not super common but when it does happen it is wildly frustrating. So now we can literally just go ahead and start dragging and dropping rails and ledges into our scene. This is a pretty simple process and everything comes preset ready to ride. For instance, this rail down comes with colliders and a grind spline preset and everything will move with the object in the scene. So if we were to go back to our scene, I can grab this rail 
I can move it and I can rotate it and I can move it some more and from here on out it's sort of up to you as to how you want to create the map everything from this point on is very much modular and should work in a fairly easy to use manner if you're familiar with the skate 3 map editor then this will feel somewhat similar although not perfect and not in the game but in the editor of the engine itself but as you can see things come together very quickly just by using the prefabricated items that come with the asset pack another good little tip is if I want this ramp and I want the same ramp over here I can press ctrl D to duplicate the ramp and move it over this works for any object you can control D pretty much anything and it should work just fine before I get to going too far I'm gonna go ahead and create some folders just like I've created in the sample scene that comes with the asset um, just to help keep things a little more organized so I'll create a ramps folder a rails folder a stairs folder and it's good to try and keep these things somewhat organized as we go because it makes it a lot easier to navigate your hierarchy when you get a boatload of objects in the scene at once. If we were to take a look at that scene, I'll show you what I mean. Here back in the example scene, if I were to select all of these and press right arrow on my keyboard, you can see that there is a ton of objects. And if this was a huge mess, this hierarchy would be really difficult to navigate. Press right on that D or on my uh, keyboard again, and it closes all those back up. So this sort of organizational system, although it can be a little tedious at times, will absolutely help you in the long run when trying to organize your maps. Another thing I'll quickly show you guys in this tutorial is how to change the styles that come with these objects. I've gone ahead and created some really nifty shaders that make your life a lot easier. By default, every object spawns with the factory shader, but let's say I want to change this rail and stair set from factory to the city style that I've also added. So to switch multiple objects, it's actually quite an easy process. We're going to go up here to tools and click assign material. I've got a script in this in the editor folder that allows us to do this very easily with multiple material with multiple objects at once. Now I click on this radio button and I can go ahead and type in city and for whatever reason it's purple but it'll work just fine double click hit assign and now we've switched over to the city shader another thing that we can do is we can change the colors in this shader I have the concrete color and the rail color separated as you can see the color of the concrete changes but this trim never changes so for instance on our factory where the yellow caution trim would be it'll always stay a yellow caution trim so if I want my stairs to be red and I want my rail to be bright pink for some strange reason or maybe I want it to be bright green it's a very easy process to change if we come over here to our styles folder this is where all of these things are saved let's say that I want to create a second city style that has slightly different colors for another object in the scene so for instance we can just go ahead and slap a flat ledge here what I can do is I can go to the styles and I can just drag this city style on but I want this ledge to be white and the stairs to stay red so what I can do is I can control D duplicate city now we have city 1 and I'll change that color to white and drag city one onto our object. So now our ledge is white and our stairs are red. And we can do this with all sorts of objects, pretty much anything in the mapping. Pretty much any asset that comes out for this should hopefully be lined up with these trim sheets to function with these styles. Something to note is that the styles, these things here, are for stuff like the ledge and the rails and the stairs big objects like for instance this pad doesn't use these styles these are trim sheets they're designed for the ledges not this pad 
What that uses is a triplanar material, and there's a few in here. For instance, in the demo scene, you may have noticed that I don't use this bland concrete. Instead, it uses this tile material. All this is is a simple material set to triplanar UV mapping. So no matter how many of these I create, and no matter where they go, they will always tile perfectly without any seams because of the way the projection works. I could even put the tiles material on my ledge if I really wanted to. It's pretty versatile. In the triplanar folder, there's buildings, concrete, tiles, and natural, but you can use these for pretty much anything that you please. Something else to note, and this is the only prefab that is like this, but the buildings in our scenery folder uh, use a triplanar and a shader. And I don't know why this happens, but all you have to do is go to styles, grab our building one, and drag it to where the pink was. I'm not 100% sure why that happens, but it seems to be happening, so easy fix. So the building, as you can see, uses this building shader for stuff like these trim objects, but then it uses a triplanar material for the bulk of the building. This stuff is pretty intuitive and you'll be able to figure out what goes where very quickly without too much difficulty. Just like the rail styles, our building style also has color selectors. So in this case, I've got this alternate building shader and it uses a dark, it uses a bit of a warmer stonework color and a completely black metal color versus the white and white of the default. Just like the other system, and just like the rail system, this is totally modifiable, and you can make some pretty interesting adjustments if you want. Alright guys, I hope that has gotten you started on your way to map creation. In the next and potentially final part, I'll cover a couple small things that you may have to fix when creating your map, such as kinked rails are a bit of an issue because of the physics of the game itself. Hopefully that won't be too difficult, and I think you guys will be able to grasp it very easily. And from there on, you'll be able to make very seamless maps with the assets included in this pack. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.